Good morning, Herons, and happy Tuesday. Welcome to the first episode of April. It's been a long way since the first Heron TV episode. This is also the 26th episode of the 2021 to 2022 school year. Now let's start off with the quote of the week, featuring Corbin. Hello, Herons. I'm Corbin, and this is this week's quote of the week. The quote is from Abraham Lincoln. He said, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose all freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. That was this week's quote of the week. Have a great day, Herons. Quotes are always inspiring, but now it's time for the random fact of the episode. I feel like one lung is bigger than the other. That sounds like a random fact of the episode. Hey Harris, did you know the left lung is slightly smaller than the right lung? Because two thirds of the heart is located on the left side of the body. The left lung contains the cardiac notch, an indention in the lung that surrounds the apex of the heart. Each lung consists of several distinct lobes. Well, I think I know why I keep running out of breath. And that was a random fact fact of the the episode. episode. I just need you in the stomach. I've always figured that both lungs are the same size. Do you know which herons need to use both of their lungs? I think we all need to use our lungs, but the herons on the track team will really need to use both of them as they run, jump, and throw this spring. But that's right, herons. The track season started yesterday. Make sure to sign up online and get your physical completed and turn into the main office if you want to be a part of this epic season. This is the last week to sign up. I sure hope we get some good weather for the track season. Let's check this week's seven-day forecast and find out. Hey, Oliver, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Have you noticed this great weather this day? Yeah, I've been really liking it. Hopefully it stays this way all week. Well, there's only way... There's only... There's, <laughs> there's only way to find out. Okay. Seven day forecast! shine you know what they say april showers bring may flowers let's not get ahead of ourselves april just started with spring here we also appreciate the wisdom that comes from our very own mental health and substance abuse counselor miss lynn it must be time for the mental health minute hi and welcome to mental health minute with miss lynn from life stance health hey team last week we talked about how the brain communicates via messengers called neurotransmitters One messenger, acetylcholine, is in charge of a lot of our automatic brain functions, like our breathing, heart rate, and muscle movements. It's a very important messenger to keep our bodies working the way they should. However, nicotine, the addictive chemical found in vaping devices and cigarettes, looks just like the messenger acetylcholine. This means it can try and imitate acetylcholine and trick your brain. When people smoke, vape, or use smokeless tobacco like chew and snuffs, their brain becomes flooded with nicotine, pretending to be the messenger acetylcholine. Too many messengers means an increase in brain functions. This can cause the smoker's heart rate to increase, their breathing to become rapid, and the muscle movements to increase. Long term, this can be really taxing on your body functions and wear out your heart and lungs. With continued use, the brain stops making its own acetylcholine messengers and begins to rely on the nicotine to do the acetylcholine's job. When someone stops using nicotine products, their brain is cut off from its fake messenger and hasn't made enough of its own for some time. Now the brain doesn't have enough acetylcholine. Not enough acetylcholine means not enough messengers telling your heart to beat or your lungs to breathe. It can take many months for your brain to begin to function regularly on its own again and create the appropriate level of neurotransmitters. The optimal way to maintain brain functions is to avoid the introduction of harmful chemicals so that the steady creation and disbursement of neurotransmitter messengers can continue. 
Next week, we'll take a look at how cannabis can disrupt these brain functions. That's all for this week. If you feel like you or a friend are experiencing any of the things we talk about in Mental Health Minute, please reach out to a parent or guardian, a teacher you trust, or a school counselor to help connect you with a therapist or counselor from Life Stance Health. What's up, parents? Mr. Over here, and I'm wearing my blue and gold, representing my alma mater, the University of Pittsburgh, because this Wednesday, April 7th, we are wearing college shirts and wearing blue and gold in order to support our avid students that are interviewing for our college and career readiness program here at Happy Valley. So go ahead, wear blue and gold or wear your favorite college shirt and support your favorite college. Go Avid and go College Day. Being a middle school student comes with having a lot of questions, but luckily at HBMS, our students have lots of answers. Let's see how the Herons answer this week's question in everybody's favorite segment, Ask a Heron. What is the best place to get a burger? In and out. All right. What is the best place to get a burger? McDonald's. What is the What is the best place to get a burger? Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Sushi Land. Chick Fil A. In and out. I love Sushi Land. Okay. Where is your favorite place to get a burger? You can go. Five Guys. Yeah, Five Guys. Or In and Out. Best place to get a burger. In and out. In and out. In and out, McDonald's. Their fries are like angel tears in my mouth. <laughs> Nelson Nord, where no. is the best place to get a burger? I I don't know. No, I can't. I can't eat. I can't eat most of the burgers anymore. Yeah, but I can have the burger itself. But I, it's some of the others. Is this like a serious thing or? No. What's the best place to get a burger? Best place to get a burger would have to be. A Winard's Grill in Oregon City across from the um, courthouse, definitely. Okay, Tati, where's the best place to get a burger? Uh, probably in and out Audrina's Farm. <laughs> um, Burgerville. in and out Any ramen, any ramen place. What was the question? Best place to get a burger. Uh, in and out Jeremy's dad's restaurant. I think we got everyone. Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> yes. I think we ha- are very fortunate to go to the school where so many kids are safe, respectful, and responsible. According to a trusted source, the Heron Call-Up Bucket has never seen so many entries. I think we're about to have five very fortunate Herons who have the good fortune of being a Heron Call-Out winner. Here are your Heron Call-Out winners. Please come to the main office to collect your prize. Speaking of the office, HGV's very own Cammy had a chance to sit down with the head of the school, Principal Welsh, and ask her a few questions. Let's shine the staff spotlight on our principal now. Good morning, Herons, and happy Tuesday. We are here in staff spotlight with Ms. Welsh. Hello, everybody. So I'm going to be asking her some questions and she's going to be giving some answers and we'll just get to know her better. Yes. Okay, first question. As always, how are you doing? I'm doing actually quite well. It's uh, Friday. Yay. <laughs> Yay. And it's a beautiful day outside and so I'm just ready to start the weekend. But I'm doing very Me well. Me too. I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. What would you say probably too close. What would you say is a typical day in the principal's office for you or the office staff? A typical day, no day is the same, I will say that. Um, But typically in my office, I'm either answering emails, I'm doing virtual meetings, um, I'm meeting with students, I'm meeting with families, um, meeting with other staff members, I'm planning uh, activities for our staff, or um, also planning activities for students. what else do we do? That's kind of it for the most part. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it takes up 
pretty much the whole day. It can be very consuming if I don't get out of my office. Being a principal sounds like a lot in itself. <laughs> it is, it's a lot, but it's very rewarding. Um, I think the work that we do is so invaluable and a lot of people don't really understand it because I think they, they see us and they don't really know like what's behind the scenes with um, all of the work and all the weight that we're carrying, but yeah. it's very rewarding. I wouldn't do anything different. It's good. Thank you. We all know that you got married mm -hmm. a few months ago. I did. You did. Um, I did. How is that going? It's going really well. Um, I've known my husband now. Gosh, we actually we were high school sweethearts, and then we went our own separate ways, and then we ended up meeting up again. And so, um, actually, about seven years ago. So I've been with him for a while. Wow. Um, and then we decided that we wanted to get married and kind of, you know, start our journey together. So, so romantic. <laughs> so romantic and it was very fun. We got married in my favorite place. So, yeah. Yes. So everybody, um, this is Miss Welsh now. She's yes. not Miss Broadus. <laughs> that is correct. I know that her email may say Miss Broadus, but it, it, it is Miss Welsh. That's correct. <laughs> Just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Um, how long have you been a principal for this school or like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for this school, only three years. Oh, three years? Yeah. Yes. It's kind of new. Uh, it, it is very new. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember, yeah, you were a teacher for a while, weren't you? I was a teacher many years ago. So I was a teacher for nine years um, in Vancouver, and then I became an assistant principal and a vice principal, and I did that for eight years, and then three years here at, at uh, Happy Valley. That's a journey. Yeah. <laughs> What would you say is your favorite thing to do in the office, apart from working? You oh, I, you know, the office staff would probably say I talk a lot, but I love <laughs> to talk to people. I do. That's like my joy. I love to talk to staff. It's funny because having our masks on and now having to have our doors closed, yeah. um, it's really hard because I don't get to make those connections, but my joy is really just talking and connecting with people. That's nice. Well, thank you. Well, that's all the questions I have. So is there anything you would like to say to all of the herons out there? Well, herons, it has been a wild ride this year. Um, the good thing is eventually we can start taking our masks off and then really get to do school like we know how to. I want you guys to have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you see me in the halls, you better say hi. And it's Mrs. Welch. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. It's Mrs. Welch. Well, that seems to be all the time we have today. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for having me. And as always, have a great day, Heron. Have a great day, Heron. But now let's get to the word of the week with Dash. Hey, you doing the Yeah. Nice. I always like to start with salad. Let's try it. Yeah. Alright, yeah. Uh, I like audio too. It gets rid of a lot of vowels. Yeah. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Let's try tonic next, maybe. That's pretty good. Alright. Tonic, maybe? That's pretty good. Hmm. I'm thinking cynic. Yeah. Man, you're cheating. You looked it up. Stop being so cynical of me. What does that even mean? Pleasure hosting with you, but I think it's time to call the show. It's been fun, but all good things must come to an end. I'm SIE. And I'm Adam. Have, Have a great, great day, day Herons.